Hey guys, welcome back to my colorful country life. Today I thought I would do an updated uh, completed pages for 2023. So this is basically every page I've ever colored. Um, so it's not a collection video as such. I'm not going to show you my uh, books that I've not colored in at all. I might do a separate video for that at the very end. But um, this is going to be every page I've ever colored. And I have broken it into parts so the videos aren't super duper long. And I thought we'd start with Joanna Bassford because um, one, you're going to get to see my most recent work and you're also going to get to see some of my oldest work as well. So my colouring journey did start with Joanna Basford, so you're going to see the very beginnings. Um, but I thought we'd start with Rooms of Wonder here, as this is one of the ones that I'm currently colouring in quite a lot. This is our full book colour along for Joanna Basford, so it's one of our full book colour alongs on the channel, which just means that every single page in this book will eventually be a tutorial or a colour along up on the channel. And there is a dedicated playlist for this. I'll see if I can pop it up above. Um, if not, I'll stick it in the description box. So now the playlist is just for Rooms of Wonder. There is another playlist which is just for all the other Joanna Basford pages. So I'm going to start from the back. I haven't marked anything, so I'm just going to flip because it's just easiest to start from the back. So we've got the bubble bath page here, and I've added some bubbles in the background. There was a lot of negative space. I don't do well with negative space. I know Joanna has said that she leaves it there on purpose for some of her pages, so we can get a bit artistic and add our own details, but I don't like adding my own details. I want the details all there, so all I have to do is think about putting the colour on the page. Um, and I know I don't have to add extra details into the background but when I see all that blank space for me the page doesn't quite feel finished until I add something um, so hence we have bubbles in the background now I think I used only Prismacolor pencils in this book so this is Prismacolor pencils if I've used something different I'll let you know if I remember but I'm pretty sure this whole book is just Prismacolor pencils so we've got the jars here now, I do remember when I was trying to work out what colour palette to use for this page, I was going to go with a rainbow uh, palette, so each jar a different colour. I really like the way the jars turned out. Part of me kind of wishes I'd use this colour palette throughout them all, but I did do an alternate palette instead. So we've got these sort of red colours and then these cool colours. Um, and then again, warm, cool, warm, cool. And these details here, so we've got the shelving and the lights. Now I added them in, I basically just copied them from this page here. And I literally actually traced them, I added an extra loop to make it go longer. And then I just made it a little bit higher and longer as well for the shelving. Um, the background here is pastels. Now I kind of wish that I didn't add the blue pastel in the background because the jars were just really popping off the page. It looked really, really good. Um, the reasoning behind adding the blue pastel, however, was because I did do a blue background in the jar. And if you've got jars sitting on a shelf, it's going to reflect or you're going to be able to see through it to what's behind it. So because I did the blue background in the jars, I thought I'd better add a blue background to the background, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but I kind of wish I'd left it blank so the jars would pop out that little bit more. Now, this page is quite detailed. So for the background, I used the... Um, the Tim Holtz watercolor, no, Tim Holtz Distress watercolor pencils, those pencils that look like crayons, I used that for the background, just in a light wash, just to give it um, a touch of color, but I didn't want anything too dark, because there was a lot going on here, and you can see I repeated a lot of the different combos as well, so there wasn't too much color happening on the page, too much different colors. Okay, next we have the owls. I really love how this turned out. I love the stonework. I think the effect is quite realistic and I'm really impressed if I do say so myself. I think it turned out really well. Um, for the owls, I've got some glossy accent on their eyes. <laughs> Every time I flip to this page, it makes me think of those little craft eyes that you can purchase. I think it's just the way Joanna's um, coloured them, the shape, uh, coloured them. The way she's drawn them, the shape, and then with that glossy accent on top. And we've got this beautiful silver, um, what is it? The silver stardust jelly roll, which is really sparkly. And I've added it to the co the cobweb here too. I love the effect it has, the little shimmer it gives to cobwebs. Okay, we've got the magical potions page. So 
what I'm thinking when I go to do this page is I'm going to bring the color palette from here to there. I really like this color palette with the purple, the blue, and the green. I think it looks really pretty together. And I'm going to pull that through onto this page as well so they match. And I've just got some um, soft pastels in the background. There's some Jelly Roll. We've got Winker Stella in there as well. Did I miss something? No. Okay, oh, that's a whip. Okay, so the cake page. Now, I do remember the moment that I was coloring this page. I was so sick when I was coloring this, and I really lost my mojo. I wanted to color something, but I just didn't have the energy or the mood. So I colored this, and I really loved how the cakes turned out. And then I added on these ribbons, and I'm not quite sure. I think... I think there's something missing from this page and I think it is the ribbons. I think I should have gone with a more contrasting colour, a deeper colour, just to um, make the ribbons pop, not the ribbons, the cakes pop out because the ribbon does go behind it. So if I'd made the ribbon darker, the cake would have popped off the page a bit more. And every time I look at this page, I do think of going back and doing something to amend it. And I may do that when we finalize the book, when everything's colored, I may come back and do something different. Or I may even do it while I'm coloring this page, because if I'm staring at it for that long, it may drive me to do something. Um, but I love the cakes. The background is fine as well. It's just a nice soft pastel. And we've got these um, liquid pearls here on the tops of the cake. Now with the ribbons, I used the silver metallic and then that was one of the spectrum noir the glitter what are they call the sparkle pens i can't remember what they're called now um it has bled a little bit over the line so um i'll have to have a think about what i'm going to go in and color that with i might go in with some paints and then use like an acrylic marker to go over the line and that will make that thicker and hide the bleed through anyway that's for another day <laughs> That's a different day's problem. Okay. I love this page. I love both these pages, actually. This one is one of my favorites in this book. And this is pretty much all colored pencil. I think um, there's some gold metallic pen here. Um, just on these skinny little borders. And then on a few of the little details. And some silver there as well. But other than that, it is all pencil. Actually, I think... I think this little background here that isn't inside the little panels, I think I used the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Pencils for that as well. Um, but I'm not quite sure. I, I, I remember using them, but when I look at it, it matches so well. Like The color matches perfectly to my ocean, to the prisoners. I mean, I can see a little bit of a... A little bit of the white peeking through, a little bit of the tooth peeking through there, and I can't see it here. That's what's making me so sure I used the watercolor pencils. I'll have to check on my video. I'm pretty sure that was the Distress Distress Ink watercolor pencils, just for the outside. The, all this ocean was Prismacolor pencils, um, but yeah, it looks exactly the same. Great color matching there, Karen. <laughs> and then we've got the Rainbow Room here. This one's fun, nice and bright and colorful. Um, Prismas again, and we've got the Tim Holtz watercolor distress pencils again for the yellow on the cloud in the background. Um, I think that was the pen, I think that's the gold pen touch. Is that the gold pen touch or the jelly roll? One or the other, and I've got the silver there too. I wonder what I use for the silver. It'll be on my video. Okay, so another couple of pages that I love. Um, this one, I think, was my first page I coloured in this book, I think. Now, as soon as I saw this page, I had the idea for the waterfall effect with the pencil stripes for the water. Um, and then these little sort of clouds of bubbles rising up. So nice, tropical, steamy shower. And I really, really, really like how that one turned out. Um, and this one here, and I matched with the gold borders, so they're similar. Um, I did use a few of the similar colours, I think. So I think like the roof here matches with this, if I remember correctly. And then I think the green leaves is the same as this. The door matches this sort of bluey green combo. But I went with a softer touch um, for this page, where this is a bit more bolder. Um, but yeah, I tried to bring some of the colors through so they would be somewhat matching. So I think, um, 
like the pink and the orange and the yellow are the same for like from the bird and the flowers as well but yeah I so I tried to do this is a busy page so the background I went with more of a um monochrome look so it looked more like wallpaper in the background and not stand out or be a focal point of the page Okay, and then we have the dressing room page. Now, this one, if I remember correctly, is a three-part colour along, with the first part being a tutorial on how to use washi tape in your colouring books. So the washi tape is on the cushion of the stool here, and it's also on this panelling in the background. Um, and I think it's all pencil. Yeah, that looks like pencil work as well. I mean, yeah, and the usual jelly roll and white Signo details as well. Yeah, and that black border. That border, actually, sorry, the gold border, that's not jelly roll. That is pen touch. That's the gold pen touch pen. I can tell because it's not as shiny. It's got more of a matte finish. Okay, two more pages in this book that I love as well. So here I've gone for a softer palette. And I mean, these images were just sort of like the lost property floating around on the page. So I quite like how um, I've done the background to tie it all in and bring it as one focal point instead of like lots of little different images. And see with the jar here, how I've, um, the jar's clear and you can see the background peeking through from behind. And I just really love this colour palette. It's really pretty and floaty and light. Um, quite the opposite to this one, which is dark and moody. So I've got opposites here. Um, this one has a lot of sparkle on the page. You can see it on the stars, on the border, on the flowers. I do like that um, bokeh background as well. Um, okay. Another two favourites. I think I've said that about most of the pages in this book, but I really, really do love these pages. Again, I've attempted a softer palette, which is very strange for me. Um, and I've actually somewhat matched the colours on both pages. Again, there's lots of jelly roll on both of the pages with this metallic gold. Here, I really like the um, pastel clouds in the different colours. I think it gives a bit more interest rather than if I coloured all the clouds blue. And the aquarium page. I love this page. I think this one is my most favourite in the book, I think. And of course, it is my usual bright, bold colour scheme that I love. So we've got lots of jelly rolls, I think, on this page. I'm not sure if that's paint. That I think that bronze, that sort of bronzy colour, um, I think that is CSY paint. Uh, the background here is a Distress Ink um, to create that cracked, exposed brick background. I used a brick stencil, um, Distress Ink. There is the Prismacolor pencils in the greys here, but then I've gone over with a uh, Stedler Triplus Fine Liner as well to make those little cracks. And I think this is one of the, my favourite backgrounds that I've ever created. And I want to um, do this one again, actually, in another book, maybe. So yeah, I love this page. Is there anything else in it? We've got, oh yeah, I feel glossy accents on the fish eyes. I think that's it. Okay, so well, actually maybe this was the first page I coloured. It was either this one or the shower room, the outdoor shower thing. I can't remember now. One of them was first. The other one was probably second. Um, I love the Toadstool page. And I actually really love how this one turned out. Now, these sort of pages aren't the type of pages I love to colour. And I remember when I started colouring um, this page and I was using all these different colours, I thought it was going to look really bad <laughs> in the end. I thought I had gone a little bit overboard in too many different colours. But now that it's all coloured, when it all came together at the end, I really love it. And I love the colours that I used. And I did um, try and match a lot of the colours from this page. And this page I just added in a little bit more of a blue colour as well. So um, the background here was Distress Ink for the clouds. But here I've used a blue pastel. I don't know if you can see it from that far away because it's very faint. There is some blue pastel clouds 
in the background of those mushrooms. And this must be stickles on the jars. Okay, so this house here now, I think I added everything in this background. I'm pretty sure none of this was here. I think it was just the house. Um, so this little reading nook, I'd love to have one of these in my house, actually. Um, now this background here, I know a lot of people did it as like hills or grass or dirt. Um, but it was just such a magical looking page, so I made it clouds instead. And um, yeah, we've got Distress Ink clouds in the background and Distress Ink clouds on this background too. Um, other than that, it's all pencil. There's, I think that's a pen touch gold. And that's it. There's no sparkle on this page at all, actually. Uh, what do I use for that black? I wonder if that black was a jelly roll. Maybe. And our typewriter room. Now, there is a lot of sparkle on this page, but it's very fine and hard to see. This was a shimmer spray. So it's very hard to see that fine glitter maybe if I hold it really close to the camera you can see it um but yeah so it's uh distress ink for the clouds prismacolor pencils got a lot of wink of Stella some jelly roll and uh, either jelly roll or pen touch full of gold this one is a very recent double page I think it's the last one I did in November um prismacolors to soft pastel for the background and jelly rolls, Winker Stella, and the Kaiser Craft Shimmer Spray for that shiny background. I'm actually really enjoying coloring wallpaper pages at the moment. I think it's the repetitive nature. I'm not one that normally likes to color like mandalas or something like that, um, but I am finding I am gaining more interest in mandalas lately. I mean, I like sort of a mandala like that, where it's um, sort of a repetitive pattern, not so much just a geometrical shape, if that makes any sense. Um, I was looking for the other wallpaper page. Not that one. There's another one that keeps catching my eye somewhere in there. That might be next month's colour page. Okay, and then I think these are the most recent, or the closest to the front. Um, these two pages, I adore how this one turned out and I quite like this one too. So I think I did this one first and then this one was sort of to match, but I added in a little bit more of this sort of bluey green tone. Um, whereas this one is a little bit more greener and then, um, yeah, we've got lots of jelly roll glaze on the centers of all those flowers and the jelly roll metallic gold. This has got soft pastel in the background. And that's it, just Prisma colours and the Jelly Roll glazes, really. And that is it so far for Rooms of Wonder. Okay, so next let's have a look at small victories. Now, I mean, I've coloured that little thing. That was just a test, um, just to see what materials I could use, whether they'd bleed through or shadow which you can see there. That was um, Stedler Tri Plus Fine Liners, uh, Jelly Rolls, I think. I can't remember what else I used on there. It's in my review for this book. Um, I think I've done three pages in here. I don't know what I'm gonna color next. Okay, so this one here was with Polychromos and Distress Ink for the background and the Kaiser, the Kaiser Craft Shimmer Spray too. I like how this one turned out. It's not my normal colour palette. I don't tend to use sort of those purpley tones much. I'm more a red, blue, orange, green kind of girl. But yeah, I really like how that one turned out. And I just used washi tape to um, get the border so I didn't go out with the distress ink. Although I did here. Went over the lines a little bit. I don't know what to colour next in this book actually. Oh, is that the next page? This one here, back to my usual bright, bold and vibrant colours. So all Prismacolor pencils, we have the Lightwish Super Golden Markers in the background and 
um, these little shiny bits here and on these leaves are the Ohuhu glitter markers. Now, when I posted the video, somebody did ask me if the glitter markers bleed through. And I can show you here, you can see these little dots on the back. That is shadowing um, or bleed through, you could even call it. I don't know. From these little hanging down leaves here, I've noticed when I'm using the Ohuhu glitter markers, if I'm using them in a very small space, I've got to use a light touch and don't go over the area. Otherwise, that's what happens. So it didn't happen with the fish. The fish are fine, but it happened um, with those little green ones. And we've got the flowers here. So Prismacolor pencils, I use the Artex Simptap markers for the background. I really love those markers. And a Jelly Roll um, glaze for the details. I really like how that page turned out. Is that it? I think that's all I've colored. Yeah. Yeah, let me know um, what you want to see next colored in this book, actually. So next up, we're going to move to Worlds of Wonder. Now, I haven't opened this book in a long time, so I can't remember what I've colored. I'm assuming it's just them, but let's, let's have a flip. Oh, no. Okay. Oh yeah, I did mark it. Didn't see that mark there. So this one is a colour along up on the channel. It is all Prismacolor pencils. There's some gouache to do these little waves here, but everything else is Prismacolor pencils, the water, everything. There is nothing else on this page. There is no sparkle. What was I thinking? No sparkle. Um next one. Oh, this one, I followed a Chris Chang tutorial for this one. I absolutely loved how she coloured this page, so I thought I would give it a go. I'm really bad at following colour alongs, but I think it turned out all right. I don't know how you guys do it. And this one here is also a colour along up on the channel, and I love this page. I think it's one of my favourite pages I've ever coloured. Um, and it is entirely Prismacolor pencils. Even the water, all that water was done with my blue pencils that, that needed to be replacing straight after this page. And then we've got, um, I think that's just black Posca on the background there. There is zero sparkle and just some white Signo as well. This one here was with Polychromos, this Toastal page, and I used um, Soft Pastels for the background. And this was my first attempt at a cloud background. I think I've improved since then, guys. But um, I actually got some paper and cut out my own little clouds because I didn't have the cloud stencil then and did an attempt at a cloud background. Yeah, I could probably go over that background, actually. I, I can't be bothered, but I probably could. I really love the colour of that toadstool as well. Yeah, um, as I was saying, I could probably go back over the background and redo it with the distress inks. I think this was, so yeah, this was soft pastel. I could do it with distress inks and make it look a little bit better, but you know what? It's good as it is. It works. What else have I done in here? Okay, this one here, also a colour along up on the channel. And it is purely Prismacolor pencils. And I think that's Black Posca for the border. I can start to see the difference in my colouring from the style I have now to the style I used to have where everything was just pencils. This one here. Was this a... I can't remember if this is the page I did for my how to color flowers tutorial was it i can't remember now it looks like it but there might have been i don't know but it might have been um what else we got aha uh -huh, okay so this is distress ink cloud background i wonder if this is the first one i did it looks like it could be the first one I did. As you can see, the, the, the blending um, wasn't as smooth. You can actually see the circle shapes here. So definitely improved on that background. 
but this one here is a color along on the channel and I think I did I don't know how many parts it was to this one because each island is colored with a different pencil set and I can't remember we've got castle arts we've got prismas polys artisas maybe was it Brit Funers? I don't know I can't remember now it's up on the channel anyway is that it oops yeah okay so next one of my all-time favorite Joanna's books is Lost Ocean now I know um this has a lot of intricate details in but that is something that I personally enjoy I love detailed books and this was the very first book I ever picked up of Joanna Basford not this exact copy I have um, gone through about five or six Lost Ocean books with fine liners prior to coming to this one. So this is, um, this one is, I was going to say recent, it's not really recent, but um, this is all done with pencils. My others, I used to finish the book and then throw them out, I know, sacrilege, but um, I do have a special soft spot for this book. So we have this one here. Or with Prismacolor pencils. I don't know how long ago I colored this page. It's been a few years. It may have been before I started the channel. I don't know. My Instagram would be able to give me that timeline. I should write dates on things, shouldn't I? This one here. Now, this one was a long-term whip that I finished. When did I finish this? 2021, maybe, I think. Yeah, I think I just started the background and then that was it. So I've gone back in and finished it all off using all these bright colours for the outside and then keeping it sort of cool toned on the centre. I didn't do a video for this. I wish I did because I'm looking at the, the way I colour those buildings and I really like the colours. I can see bits of green, blues, purples. Hmm. Wonder, wonder if I wrote that somewhere. I might have actually written down on a colour tracker somewhere. I think that might be it. I wish I had time to colour in this book more. And when I see these pages, especially this one, I can remember how I coloured it with my fine liners as well. So it brings back a lot of memories. I really wish I had my original books. Okay. 30 Days of Creativity. Um, this one I didn't really do much in. I think I just, yeah, I just coloured the title page. I didn't really, um, I don't like drawing, so some of the pages are pretty, but I like to colour an actual full colouring page rather than things like this, so it's not my favourite Joanna book, I have to say. I don't want to be drawing anything, <laughs> I don't want to be adding anything if I could possibly can. That would actually be pretty fun to colour, I could do like a little stamp a day, but yeah, so this is barely got any use from me just this page here which was prismacolor pencils and distress ink background and no sparkle again how to draw inky wonderlands okay only one page in this one as well so i can't draw and i try to draw and it doesn't work so i did trace the details that i added to this page and because i traced the details i can't work out what i added and what i didn't um i think i've added the b Maybe these plants that are hanging down as well. The butterfly. Maybe this caterpillar. A snail maybe. Another butterfly. I assume all these plants were already here. And the bokeh background. This was actually polychromos. That page was coloured with polychromos. Is that really all I've done? Yeah. This book, um, although I say I don't, I, I can't draw, but I would like to give it another go, I think. I, I, I do like this book, even though the other book didn't interest me so much. The 30 Days of Creativity, where adding your own. This is more of a learning book, so this one does interest me. Okay, next we have Enchanted Forest. Now, this... I think is all earlier work I think I don't think I've done anything recently in this book okay all right so this double page here this was a really old whip 
Um, there is a blog post up on my website and you probably see, um, I think I did a post on Instagram as well. Um, this was a long term whip. I had done the background on this page in Prismacolor pencils. I'd done a sort of, um, like a galaxy type of background, but it was so busy. Um, it looks really messy actually. And after I did that, I abandoned the page. Um, I had also... I think I coloured a little bit of the green down here. Can you see that page? I coloured a little bit of the green here. And I might have coloured a tree or two. I can't remember, but definitely that background. So, um, yeah, there is a blog post up on my website of how I used gesso to cover over the uh, pencil work. And then I went back in with Neo Color 2s. Um, so the background is all Neo Color 2. And the rest is all Prismacolor. And then this gold background. I don't know if it is gold paint. It looks like gold paint. Yeah. Okay. And then we have this one here. I think off the top of my head, this was a mix of Prismas and Poly. So nothing in this book is a colour along because this is all my older work. Um, I think like some of this detail here is Polychromos. The background here, Prismacolors. The water here, I think it's probably Polychromos. As you can see, nothing's really burnished. You can see the tooth coming through there a bit. I remember when I coloured this page though, I absolutely loved how it turned out. This one here, now I do love this page. Um, I get asked quite a bit on um, if I have a colour along for this page and I don't, and I don't remember um, anything, any of my colour combos, I didn't write anything down back then because this is one of my earlier works. Um, all of the detail is polychromos, the only thing that is not is the background where I use Prismacolors and my circles. So I can't draw circles either, <laughs> not proper round circles. So you can see actually the pencil lines of where I've um, added the circles in. And I've just used a normal lead pencil, but I do love the color palette I used for this page as well. I really like how this one turned out and I wish I could recreate it. Maybe one day. I don't know. See, you can see that I've used quite a soft touch though, and I am really heavy handed, so I, that would be hard for me to recreate. I think there's something else in here. Maybe I'm wrong. Looks like I could be wrong. Yeah, okay, so that's it for Enchanted Forest. Okay, Joanna's Christmas. Now there's some earlier stuff and some more recent stuff in here, I think. I've got tags. Should I tag everything? Okay, so this is something I did a long time ago, trying to do sort of a Northern Lights background here and attempting to colour snow. These sort of colours don't really go that well. That was my attempt at gold. It's very yellow. <laughs> um, and I can't remember what I used on the snow globe here, but it has smudged all the way around the outside too. Oh, my owl. So this grumpy little owl is a colour along up on the channel. Distress ink for the clouds. Um, some sort of silver metallic pen on his... Christmas sweater, his ugly Christmas sweater. I like the colour combos used here. I think that one looks really pretty. And I think it's Prismacolors. Could be Polly's. I think it's Prismas though. Um, uh, this one is Artex pencils. So I've got, oh, that was the, I think that blue shiny stuff and the pink as well is those Spectrum Noir, the glitter pens that I was talking about. I can't remember the proper name for them. Um, we've got some soft pastel in the background, that blue colour. And then, yeah, that was all Artex pencils. 
I really like this page. I love how this guy turned out. My little polar bear. I love how I coloured um, the fur. So with that sort of yellowish tinge to it. I wish I had written down that colour combo because it is the perfect colour for white fur. Uh, the gingerbread house. Now this was actually kind of fairly recent. I think I did this 2020 maybe. Um, this is actually polychromos and I, I did originally film this as a colour along and then I wasn't too impressed by the page so it never saw the light of day and I deleted all the footage but here is the completed page and I am not sure what I used for all those sparkles. Can't remember now. And this one here, that's got to be, that's got to be Prismacolors, doesn't it? Surely that's Prismacolors. I can't remember. Yeah, it's either Prismas or Polys. I think it's Prismas. And then this one here, this is definitely Prismacolor pencils. This is a very old one. I think this is the first page I started in this book. Um, and it was a whip for a long time. And then I completed the whip. And there is a soft green pastel in the background, which has kind of faded a little bit and kind of just looks like the page has gone yellow. <laughs> so that is Joanna's Christmas. Okay, so next we're going to look at World of Flowers. Now I've got two of these here. Which one's this one? Which one? Are... Okay, we'll look at this one first, I think. Yeah, so... This book here was the very first book I coloured in with coloured pencils. So this is my earliest possible coloured pencil work you're going to see today. Um, and I have a huge soft spot for this book. It is one of my favourites and I would love to come back in and finish it at some point. Now this page here is my one and only whip that I have. Um, other than the one I'm currently working in, Rooms of Wonder. It's the only whip I have out of my whole colouring book collection. Um, and one day I'll probably come back and finish it, maybe. And this was all Prismacolor pencils so far. So, and this book is all Prismacolor pencils because that is all I owned at the time. Um, so when this book originally came out, I can't remember what year that was. Uh, 2018 so 2018 that this came out in the October I believe and my husband bought me my first set of Prismacolor pencils as well I got them a little bit before Christmas it was a Christmas present um, and these two arrived at the same time so I started playing around and yeah this is the end result so um, it is earlier work so it's not you know the standard that I have today but I absolutely love it and it was such a fun learning experience and I do cherish this book and when I look back at all the pages, I can remember what I was doing and what I was trying to achieve at the time. Um, and I do still really like it. Like this, I completely do differently, especially that background. I look at that background, but I absolutely love the colors. So I was doing something right. <laughs> this one I love as well. So I think back then I was just using Prismacolor pencils and white Posca. I'm going from the front this one because it is quite full. Um, Prismas again. Some added detail. These toastful houses I traced, I think, from I think from Ivy and Inky Butterfly, if I remember correctly, because I can't draw. And I use a lot of neon pencils. I think um, if you've been following my colour combo series and I've been adding in the neo colours to some of the combos. And I did mention on one of the live premieres that I use neons a lot. These yellow combos have your neon. So do the pinks. You can see the neon pinks. I use them a lot in this book. I just like really bright colours. I remember colouring these while I was on holiday. My attempt at adding in some extra grass.
Now this one here was a long term whip. I coloured the beetle, didn't like what I did with it. I raised it as much as I could and it was really bright like neon colours and I raised it as much as I could and then I just sort of went over it and tried to fix it. I had to go in with some darker colours to cover up. You can still see little bits of the neon peeking out. Um, and then I just finished off all the background after that. I think this is... Uh, I don't know what that is actually. If I've used soft pastel maybe or distress ink. I don't know. Uh, it's surely it's soft pastel. Yeah. This one here. I love this when I first coloured it, and I was trying this little like firefly effect around these little lights. So obviously, I'd colour a lot of these pages a, a bit differently now, but you know. This was such a fun learning curve and this is my first and favourite page coloured in this book and I will show you now my other world of flowers because I did recreate it um, however many years later. When did I do this one? So this one is a colour along up on the channel. So, um, so much stuff in my way. That's the original and then that was me redoing it later on so i actually do prefer the colors i chose here my little rusty old ute um but my technique is a lot better in this one you can see it definitely with the the shading i'll lift it up the shading and the blending has improved so much over the years i do love these colors though that is one of my favorite pages of all time um just because i was learning so much as i was as i was coloring it and that's all i've done in my new world of flowers that was i bought that um, book specifically to recreate my very first ever colored page so this one here this was my very first attempt at brickwork and you can see where it stops here was actually before the book fell open properly so you know the spine was sitting here and i couldn't get in any further but now it sits flat it looks like i've left this um white stripe but um my very first attempt at a brick background and i remember turning this into a window i think i added did i add this size to co to close it in or were they already there oh i can't remember now gosh i'm losing my mind um now, my bricks look a little bit different these days, as you would have seen from Rooms of Wonder, but my very first attempt, and you know, I'll lift it up so you can see the pencil from where I've actually drawn it in. So I used the same brick stencil that I did in Rooms of Wonder. Hang on, let me grab that book again. So I used the same brick stencil, but what I do, I held the brick stencil over the page and just got my pencil and sort of coloured in all the little bricks. Um, but instead of like going over the pencil work or rubbing it out um, or even drawing it in with a light coloured pencil instead of a lead pencil, um, so it wasn't so noticeable or visible, I've just left it as is. But you know what? It was fun at the time. Uh, and this is my first attempt at covering white lines. And what did I use? Because I can't feel, like it feels smooth. Hang on. It would have had to have been white Posca because I'm pretty sure that's all I had. I can't feel anything. You know when you feel like the raised up bits when you put like a white gel pen or something? It has to have been Posca. And my attempt at drawing in some clouds. And I don't know if I said this was all Prismacolor pencils. This one I loved. I love the colour combos I use for this page. Beautiful and bright. Okay. Now this page here is full of neons. We've got the neon orange, the neon yellow, the neon pink on everything. 
I messed up so you can see all, again, all the neons there. Even in the little potions and stuff here. Now I added in this wallpaper. So the page is very busy and I've decided to make it even busier clearly. So I've added in this wallpaper um, and I made a mistake. Where is it? Yeah. I kept going with my little stripes, so I've tried to cover over that, not very successfully. And then I added in this floor as well. So color choices were not so great on this page. Actually, if I take away the background, take away the floor, it would actually look really good. But um, yeah, so lots of neons. I said I use my neons all the time before and now not so much. Actually, not at all, hardly. Um, a little love heart here. This one, first attempt at stonework. So, looking a little bit different from my more updated stonework. So, it's come a bit of a long way, I should say. Now, this background here was not originally black. I do have a photo somewhere, somewhere. Um... Now, the background was originally like a sunset type of background, but it was going from like purple to red to orange to yellow, and it was just so busy, so much going on. And after I did it, I didn't like it, so um, my only or my last resort was to cover it over with black Posca at the time. And I believe I added in this whole little tree trunk viney thing here. I think there was only one on this side going up to where it curves there and I added this one in myself, drew that one in myself. Um, other than that I quite like how these flowers turned out. You can see a little bit of the neon yellow again at the end and a bit of neon pink too actually. And there's some neon yellow on these flowers too so yeah. This one here, was this one, did I follow a Chris Chang? I might have followed a Chris Chang tutorial. Yeah, I think I did. I can tell by these things. Yeah, this was a Chris Chang tutorial. So close to finishing this book. And this one here. I don't think the, the bird matches so well, but... um. Still like how it turned out, and I've coloured over some of the white lines again here. Yeah, and on the branches as well. Well, I've temp attempted to. These two, I actually really love this one. Now this one could be, no, it wasn't. I was going to say this one could be the one I did for the uh, How to Colour Flowers tutorial, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Pretty sure it was the other one. Um, and that's not it. There's something else. This one I love as well. Um, black Posca background. A little bit stripy over here. I think my, my um, Posca pen might have been dying. Um, I love these colour combos. These two look really pretty together. I wish I was tracking my colours in to know what com colour combos I used. My book's falling apart. Okay, these ones here. Now, I was feeling a little bit creative this day and I turned... So this was just a bunch of flowers and I've added in this little tree trunk. Drawn freehand. I'm quite impressed with myself because I think it looks not too bad. It looks decent <laughs> for a tree trunk. Um, and yeah, sunset background or sunrise background. And I've tried to make everything brighter here near the sun and darker here. So it's going from like black to green and then this lighter green to like a chartreuse and even the blue for the sky. I thought I saw some neons. I did here. Some more neon pinks. And this house here. And yeah. I thought maybe I'd drawn one of these in, but no. It looks like it was always there. And... Oh, oh there's more. This one, I when I coloured this page, I was really, really impressed with the end result. This butterfly, I coloured it. 
um, quite bold and bright to stand out. Now the background was supposed to be more muted so it would um, make the butterfly pop more and I have tried to white out the lines. I really do love these little peachy colour combos as well. So, um, And the background is pencil work like a bokeh effect attempt. I quite like how that turned out. This one here I love. Now, um, I remember thinking where the butterflies here. I do remember adding some, but I'm pretty sure I added all of them. If I have a look at my other world of flowers, I don't think any of them were there. No, nope. that's the original. And that's my, I really like the colors I chose for that one too. Um, yeah. My attempt at making a skull look pretty. And I know there's another one back here, yep. This one took me forever to colour, all with Prismacolor pencils. And you can see blending wasn't too hot, but you know. <laughs> it's quite busy, there was a lot going on here. I've added a lot of different colours to this page, but um, you know, had fun while doing it. It has faded a lot. So everything you see in this book, I haven't used a fixative on. So you can see how the colours have faded. And that is polychromos. That was me um, demonstrating to someone how I did a bokeh effect background with only like two or three layers of polychromos. Um, and that is it in World of Flowers. I've also got Magical Jungle. So some of this is earlier work and some of this is more recent, as you would have seen. Um, probably sick of seeing me talk about this book by now. So this is one of my earlier pages. Uh, Prismacolor pencils and a tempted bokeh background. Now, with my blending, I didn't burnish the page, so you can still see some tooth in it. Uh, but it's given this beautiful, delicate look to a, to the page and I really really love the end result so it is earlier work and um the coloring style is probably different to what I would do now but I love the page and I love the end result uh, oh there's another one okay this one was interesting I added a lot of things onto this page um from what I remember I added in these sort of mountains and these sort of little grassy hills I think it just had this bottom bit here and these little plants around the side. So these little mountains, the waterfall, I think that was all added by myself. And this is all polychromos. Yeah, even the background, it's all polychromos. And again, there's no burnishing here. I was trying to, I kept, this is when I wanted to colour with a soft palette. Um, but I don't have a soft touch. <laughs> So it takes a lot of work for me to colour soft like this, um, whereas my usual work is more like that, bold and bright and out there. So it takes a lot um, of effort for me to get something softer. Um, so there was nothing else in between, was there? Did I skip? Nope. Okay, so this one you've seen 10 million times by now. Uh, Prismacolor pencils. There is a colour tracker somewhere, I think it's up in the Facebook group, in the um, albums for Prismacolors. And I don't know if I posted it anywhere else. But uh, Prismacolor pencils and that is the Ohuhu glitter markers. I absolutely am obsessed with how they look. And they didn't blend, um, bleed through this paper. So I think I showed you in uh, Small Victories, there was a bit of shadowing and bleed through. I didn't get that on this paper. Oh, there's maybe a little bit of shadow in here. Maybe, but is it? Yeah. With the green. Oh, that's the same colour that I had the shadow in with in Small Victories too. Maybe it's something to do with that green pen. Um, so, what else have we got here? Okay. Now, this one here... Um, you may have seen in my how to colour leaves video. So this is in my spotlight series 
uh, playlist. It's also under my Joanna Bassett playlist too. Um, all Prismacolor pencils and the background is Distress Ink with the Cloud Stencil. And that Cloud Stencil is linked in my Amazon store if anyone's looking for it as well. So there is absolutely no sparkle or anything. There's not even any white signal on this page either. Nothing. Just pencil. And is that everything? Mm. Yeah, that's it. I thought I had more in this book. No, that's it from Magical Jungle. Okay, so Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. Now, is this my most recent? I've got two copies here. Yes. So this copy is a pencil copy, but I still have my original um fine liner copy so let's have a look at this one first and then we've got secret garden next and i have the same sort of thing going on with secret garden so let's have a look from the back now all these were colored prior to me having a channel so nothing in here is a color along either um and this is i think this was clearo paints on this one and the background is probably soft pastel. I kept saying I was going to finish this book and give it to my daughter, but I've hardly coloured anything in it. Maybe, maybe it'll be a grandchild. <laughs> I'm going to a grandchild next. Um, I think that's Neo Colour 2 in the background. I think that was my attempt at Neo Colours. Very early attempt. I do like how that turned out though. Um, this is all Prismacolor pencils and Calero paint, I believe, for the gold details. This one I love. It is completely all Prismacolor pencils. There is nothing else on this page whatsoever. It's just all Prismacolor pencils. The whole background, everything. Yeah. And again, this was before I was using Fixative too, so you can see it has faded a bit. And nothing is fully burnished either. So this is like, oh, 2019. When did this come out? Was it 2019? Oh, come to the page. Um, where is it? Do we not have, I don't know if we've got publisher info. Is it on the back? Yeah, okay. First published in 2017. No. Did this come out before World of Flowers? No. 2017? Yeah. Um, so... Uh -huh. This one here was a long-term whip. I also had to use a gesso to fix up this page. Um, over on my little treehouse here, I covered that up. Um, and yeah, it's all Prismacolor pencils, uh, Distress Ink clouds, and CSY paints. Even the little purple phone is CSY paints as well. Oh, and the sort of yellow around the lanterns is soft pastel. So that was finished 21, I think, 2021. But it was, yeah, long-term whip. Actually, 2017, that makes sense because this is a new copy of the walk. And my ivy and the, the inky butterfly that I'm going to show you was my older copy before I started coloring properly um i love this i love how it turned out i quite like the brickwork as well so this was another earlier page but i absolutely love it and yeah even the blending the shading i really like this page and my wonder room i had i actually had fun color in this page too and i like the colors that i used Took a while to finish, but I really like the end result. And we've got no sparkles or anything. I love these little um, sort of rainbow pastel feathers as well. And then the other one. 
these two here. So I use the same color palette for both pages to make it like a double page spread instead. And did I copy Inky's Inky Ivy? Did I copy Ivy? Oh, somewhat. I know I colored this one a lot. This was older than this one, I think. I can't really even remember what order I coloured them in. Um, yeah, I like how this turned out. I love the colour combos. The background could have been a little bit smoother, but um, other than that, I really like the colours used. And I would like to colour in this one a little bit more. Now, let's have a look at my original Ivy and Inky Butterfly. So, this one is back in my days of fine liners, before um, I joined the colouring community, before I knew that adult colouring was a actual thing. Um, this was what I was colouring. I don't know what I was doing there. So this is all um, Stedler Triplus Fine Liners and Glitter Pens. I think I did this in order. So I should, probably should have started from the beginning. Here we go. So a little bit different to the page I just showed you. Just slightly. I've got those metallic pens. The top. So like I said... This was my mindless colouring sitting in front of the TV. This is me just colouring for anxiety, basically, to help with anxiety. So um, before it became an actual hobby of mine. Stella Triplus Fine Liners. Gosh, I went through some sets of those. This actually, this actually reminds me of Small Victories and um, kind of a little bit similar to the colour palette I used as well. Maybe there was something subconscious going on there. I quite like my little bees. Yeah, a um, little bit of improvement since then. I really love this page. I remember colouring this page and I really loved how it turned out. This one too. I wasn't so much um, excited about the muted colours, but I think it really suited this page, sort of like an antique um, antique books. And the same here as well, but this was my favourite. This purple colour was my favourite um, of the Triplus Fine Liners. Some neons. My original Wonder Room. artifacts and my cake page yeah okay so now secret garden so I do have okay so I've got a few copies of secret garden so I've got these ones here I've also have a brand new one that I haven't colored in at all um, but let's first look at miniature secret garden because this one, I've only coloured one in, and it was this page here. Um, when did I colour? So I got this book when it first came out, and I coloured that page when I first got the book. So uh, this edition published in 2020. Okay, so that page is probably from 2020. Um, you can see the line there again. So clearly I hadn't cracked my spine and the book wasn't sitting flat at the time I colored this page. Now this is all Prismacolor pencils. And I remember at the time I actually did film this one. Um, but again, I thought the page just wasn't interesting enough for me to put out as a color along. So I scrapped the footage and I don't think it ever saw the light of day. <laughs> now, Secret Garden, this was, um, I think I got this before Ivy. So Lost Ocean was my first fine liner book. And then I got Secret Garden, Enchanted Forest, Magical Jungle, um, and Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. I don't know what order they were in, but they were all fine liners. And I colored them all in order as well. So my book is falling apart. It was well worn sitting on the lounge with me in front of the TV, just mindlessly colouring just to clear my mind and bring down my anxiety. So, you know, look, it's not great colouring. I don't even know if I'd call it colouring, but um, it served a purpose at the time. It helped me through a time I needed help and I've got to appreciate that.
this is not my favorite um coloring book at the time i liked all these little details and stuff but um i don't like books where they say to add things like this one does um same with kirby's got some of them too in his early books as well so they're not my favorite but clearly i was going through some sort of pastel neon phase for these double pages I must have got um, some nature a nature color set or something for those ones. Yeah, so this is where it all began. Is that everything? Nope. Oh, that's my attempts at soft pastel, I think. Just testing, because I think I used this book as a tester for a few things. I actually think I used this as a tester for my Prismacolor pencils as well when I first got them. Um, if I remember correctly... I was testing out some color blends in here somewhere. Okay, so I went through a phase when I was coloring um, some of these pages and very much it can be seen in my original Lost Oceans, which I do have photos of those pages because one of my friends and I would color pages at night and we'd send each other pictures, but I don't actually have the actual book. But I went through a phase where I thought, I don't have to color everything on the page. I can leave some things blank and it gives it a little bit more interest and makes other things pop and not pop. And yeah, so there are things that aren't all completely colored. I actually quite like that colour palette. Oh, me attempting some very first blends here. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying to put some colours together and see what happened. Same with this one. I actually think I was onto something there with that stonework. Uh, what else is in here? Some more attempts at blends. Blues. Okay, clearly this was me attempting some um, autumn, autumn leaf colour palettes. So anyone following my colour combos, this is where it all began. Now they, they turned out alright actually. Is that pencil? I don't know. There's that larger picture that I coloured from the miniature secret garden. So I do have a brand new uncoloured copy of this book that I should actually colour something in. Again, this is a very early attempt at trying to make some blends, adding in the neon colours here. I didn't know what I was doing, but you know what, that's how we learn, isn't it? Well, that's how I learn. Here as well, some pinky purpley combos. I don't think there's much more in there. That's the triplus fine liners. I have no idea what I was attempting here. Maybe some sort of colourful background. This was clearly a bokeh attempt. I've drawn a circle here. I don't know what I was doing. Triplus fine liners and then some leaf attempts. Actually, those combos would have been really good if, I, if I'd known back then how to blend. They're actually decent colours together. Um, and that will be it. Yep, that is it. So that is everything I've ever coloured in Joanna Basford's books. So I'm not showing any um, PDFs, just books at the moment. So we will be back next time and I think we might go with Kirby Roseanne's next. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.